What is up, everybody? Kevin Walsh here for the Sports Kingdom. Doing this also on WICR. Going to upload it to WICR. And if that is where you are watching, check the link in the description for the Sports Kingdom YouTube page. That's my YouTube page. That's where all of my content is going. I've been doing content on there for the past week or so, and I'm going to continue to do so. I just wanted to put everything in one place for you guys. Not not a mishmash like it is kind of over here on WICR. So the one-stop shop, if you will, is the Sports Kingdom for all my stuff. So make sure you check that out drop a like and a subscription now for today's episode we're going to be getting in to pickums for the nfl but before we do that i want to do quickly very quickly the college football pickums because a great slate of games is coming up tomorrow so very quickly going to breeze through them just give you a quick reasoning and, and who i've got Michigan State, Notre Dame, 12 versus 18. I'm rolling with Notre Dame. They're the home team in this one, and I believe that Deshaun Kaiser is someone that when we get into our NFL draft stuff, which obviously we love doing over here on WICR and that stuff you will find on the Sports Kingdom, when we get into that, we're going to be talking about Kaiser as a top five pick and possibly number one overall. So that's a guy to keep your eye on, and I think that he's going to be able to get the win there for Notre Dame in a very big game. We also have two versus 10. FSU going to Louisville here, and this is a big ACC matchup. Lamar Jackson has entered himself heavily into the Heisman conversation. DeAndre Francois is the other quarterback on the side of this battle, the freshman who has really impressed people. But I'm going with the veteran who is at home, I think, for Francois. It, it may be a, a tougher adjustment for him on the road, and I'm just going to have to pick the home team in this one. If they were playing uh, at FSU, I probably would have gone with them. But I think in Louisville, I think that does give them a, a big advantage here. Excuse me. Alabama going to Ole Miss. This is actually an interesting one considering the crazy fact that Alabama has been owned by Ole Miss the past two seasons. I don't think that that trend continues. So far, the SEC has been unimpressive to me, but Alabama is not in that quarter category. They have been excellent. Of course, what they did week one was so impressive. I think the most impressive win we've seen so far of this season. Uh, I think Alabama continues to roll, but I also think that this is important for them. They, they need to continue to roll and show their dominance because the SEC to me isn't the powerhouse, so they really should be steamrolling teams the rest of the way. And then we also look at some some other key matchups there, Mississippi State uh, against LSU. I think LSU has a big statement game. I think you're going to be seeing uh, a very big game there for Leonard Fournette. Auburn against Texas A&M. That's Texas A&M 17, Auburn unranked. I think Auburn pulls up the upset at home. And then the final ranked matchup, it's the late uh, 7.30 game there. That'll be on Fox. It's going to be Ohio State against Oklahoma. I've been on record since last year. I really don't like Oklahoma. I think that they are a tier below the elite teams in college football. Uh, I think that them being in the college football playoffs last year was ridiculous. I didn't think that they belonged. And they got off to a, a start that kind of represented that. I know you could say, oh, they lost a lot of pieces and things like that that but they played Houston they lost their home this week against Ohio State their season in the balance and I think that they are going to lose this matchup as well I'm going with Ohio State now let's move on to the NFL pickums and I guess before we can actually officially do that we should also mention last night's game the Jets travel to Buffalo and they pick up a big time victory 37 to 31 and people may feel like I'm overstating the importance of this win but when you really think about the fact that the Jets lost a really tough game week one, and, and that put them already in a hole up against the Pats, who had that extremely impressive surprise victory over the Cardinals. You think about the fact that they lost twice to Buffalo last year, and the, Buffalo was the team that ended their season, and the terrible performance for Fitzpatrick there. Well, Fitz definitely bounced back last night. He looked very sharp. I think it's it might have been his best game as as a Jet. I think there might be some people that disagree to that, but to me, he he was really on the money. Three hundred and seventy four yards It was definitely one of his best performances over the past uh, well season in two games now, if you will. But had they lost to Buffalo again and gone down zero and two, that would have been a really really tough loss for them to swallow. So I think that overall, that was actually a much needed victory for the Jets to get them back on track and back where they need to be we you know we, we spoke about how tough of a schedule that this team has next week they're traveling to Kansas City and, and it's not going to get easier from there then you know Seattle Pittsburgh Arizona it, it's a tough schedule so that was a much needed victory for the New York Jets now let's just rock up into these pickums we're not we're not going to take an eternity on these but we're, we're definitely going to try to go through all of them and and give them the justice that they deserve we'll start with Possibly the game of the week, Cincinnati going to Pittsburgh, the two 
teams that are have really been at the top of the AFC North now, it feels, for quite some time. And Pittsburgh, to me, was the most impressive team week one. I thought what they did on the road against Washington was impeccable. Antonio Brown and Big Ben, that is one of the all-time great quarterback-wide receiver combinations, and that is that might be an understatement. The, this this duo, this tandem, is amazing. And when you look at that, this stat that came out of the last 16 games that Big Ben has been quarterback with him and Antonio Brown, you combine the stats over, over those 16 games, Antonio Brown would have the single-season receptions record and yards record. And, and that, to me right there, puts everything into perspective of how well these two work together. And the fact that D'Angelo Williams can just come in so easily and... and have them not miss a beat for Le'Veon Bell, who a lot of people consider the league's best running back. That, to me, is just so impressive, and I think that is a big reason why I am going to go with Pittsburgh in this game. I like what I saw from the Bengals week one. I think that Andy Dalton is continuing to establish himself as the franchise quarterback for Cincinnati. Last year, he was having an MVP-type season, and when he went down, you saw how big of a loss that was. Week one, I thought he played very well. Him and A.J. Green, obviously, are on the same page. They, they are they are flowing. They are working. They look great together. And I think for the Bengals this week, it's going to be big for them to get their run game run game going. The Jets have that incredible defensive line that can really stop any run game. But now for the Bengals, they can get Geo going, get Jeremy Hill. And that's going to try to keep them around. But I think ultimately Pittsburgh wins a close one at home. Now we have Detroit going up against the Titans. And I think this game here um, is going to be one that, that will be interesting now. I, I anticipate Detroit getting the win. The reason why I think it's interesting is I think Detroit might be able to win impressively. And if they do, then people are going to really start to wonder if, if this team is a legitimate contender to get themselves into the playoffs. Last season for them it was it was an absolute nightmare. It was a headache. They finished 7-9, and nine, but th- there was a couple of losses, specifically the Hail Mary loss to Green Bay and... The Calvin Johnson fumble tapped into the back of the end zone that should have been that should have given the, the Lions a chance to win that game against the Seahawks. Had those two games, just two quick breaks gone their way, they're nine and seven and they're in the playoffs. So I think for the Lions, they have confidence in their group there. And I really loved what I saw from Matt Stafford week one. Not just throwing the ball, but the leadership. He looked so invested, so bought in, and I loved everything that I saw from Stafford. Tennessee is still remaining as one of the worst teams in the league. Yes, they have things that are going for them. DeMarco looked very good week one. Mariota is continuing to improve, but ultimately, I just don't think that this is a team that's going to really struggle to even hit four wins, and I think that Detroit now, at home, can make a big statement for themselves here and really have people starting to talk about how how good can Detroit be. Now we have Baltimore going to Cleveland. Um, Cleveland looks like a disaster again, and I don't think that's a, dis- a surprise to anyone. RG3 is already on the IR after just one week. Out at least, I think it is ten, eight, eight or ten weeks it is, and I think it's unlikely that we really see RG3 again. McCown is probably better than him. The, the Browns actually might have got better with the RG3 injury, considering where these two are at. Um, at these, you know, at, at the point of their careers, um, but overall, I don't, I don't know what to expect from Cleveland. I, they're, they're not a good team. The defense is going to struggle. I, I think Joe Flacco can go out there. He's going to hit a couple of deep balls to Mike Wallace. Um, I think the run game might be able to establish themselves a bit better because the Eagles' run game was able to, to do pretty well for themselves against Cleveland. I just think that. You know, I, I think where Cleveland's going to be able to grab themselves a couple of victories, and I think it's going to be a couple. I think it's going to be maybe two wins that this group can get. Um, I think it might come from maybe a, a really big game from Josh Gordon, and one of those just sneaky, not that impressive, just kind of a, a boring, grinded out type game win that they're able to get themselves somewhere in the division. But I don't, I don't think it is this one. I think Baltimore does take the win. Now you have. <coughs> You have Dallas going to Washington. This is a very big game, if you ask me. Dallas week one, a lot of people somehow came away impressed. I wasn't very impressed. And I had people say, oh, they lost by one. You're big on the Giants. How could you not be impressed? Um, the, The defense didn't do it for me. The first half, the Giants only had the ball three times. They punted once. They scored two touchdowns the other time. Uh, Dak Prescott... The completion percentage is under 60, no touchdowns. And I know people say, oh, Dez dropped that touchdown. But 
that would have been a terrific catch. That was no easy catch. Landon Collins was draped all over him, and it was it was a bit over the shoulder grab. It would have been a very impressive grab. It's not like that was something that well, was extremely easy. It was a very good throw by Dak, but uh, Dak didn't necessarily impress me. It was a lot of dink and dump, and I mean that that's not going to just win you football games. And then I think maybe the most concerning thing was how the Giants really manipulated the offensive line, sort of, of the Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott only. 2.5 yards per carry. He did get on the score sheet, but I think that I thought that that was a a difficult start to the season for Dallas because there was a lot of things that I, for me I, I left unimpressed with, um, and I think that's part of the reason why I'm going to go with the Redskins, who I will say did look equally unimpressive, or if not even less impressive, uh, with the way that they got shellacked by Pittsburgh at home. But I, I do think that Kirk Cousins started to find his rhythm a bit. In the second half, I think there may have been some jitters for him. Kirk Cousins has a lot riding on this season. It's a lot more than just trying to get back to the playoffs. Um, it's his future in the league. Washington obviously has him playing on on a franchise, on the franchise tag, and he said it himself. He wants to show that he's not a flash in the pan, that he's not a one hit wonder, and he wants to you know establish himself as the franchise guy here, the the guy. He wants when you think Redskins, he wants you to think. Kirk Cousins, and I think that he still has that potential, and I think he's going to have to have a bounce-back week here against Dallas, and I think that he certainly will. The Saints going to the Giants, I think, is actually a pretty funny game. If anybody remembers what happened last year, 52-49 to victory, and probably the most insane game of the season. Drew Brees and Eli Manning, both with six touchdowns. It was a shootout like no other, and I think you're going to see a lot of points again in this one, but I think that Eli Manning is going to have another good day. I think it's going to be four or five touchdowns for Eli, um, but I think that the defense for the Giants is going to be able to cause some separation. Drew Brees is still going to have himself a very good day, probably three touchdowns. He's going to still have himself a very good day. But I just think that the Giants' offense, I think the receiving core for them, Shepard, Cruz, and Odell are going to run wild um, against the Saints. And then I think the defense are going to be able to get a couple of stops here. I I like uh, the Giants a lot here uh, in Week 2. The lock of the week now coming up. Carolina at home, the home opener after a very disappointing week one against the team who won by the largest margin of victory, the San Francisco 49ers. Listen, I I was someone who was excited for the 49ers this year. Um, I do believe that Chip Kelly is a good coach, and I thought that he was going to be able to surprise some people. I did not think that week one was going to go exactly how it did. I had them beating the Rams. I didn't think they were going to shut them out and win 28 nothing. I think the 49ers are going to be a lot better than what people anticipated. They're, they're not going to contend for the playoffs or, or anything um, like that. Make no mistake about it, the Rams are a very, very bad football team. Um, and, they're, and they're now running into a Carolina who has something to prove. I think it's a big day for Cam Newton. I think Carolina goes out there, uh, and I think they have a, a big-time victory over what is still one of the lesser teams in the NFL. Now you have Kansas City going to Houston to play the Texans. For me, this is actually my game of the week. I know a lot of people really like um, the Cincinnati-Pittsburgh game, but this game for me, um, I think it's a big game. You look at how these two teams seasoned. Uh, these these two matched up last year in the playoffs, obviously the wild card game. The Chiefs embarrassed the Texans. But the Texans have now come back with a, a lot of different pieces. Brock Osweiler, obviously at quarterback now. They've brought Lamar Miller in. The rookie, Will Fuller, was very good week one. And then you look at the Chiefs. They, they're still missing a lot of pieces. Jamal Charles is not... Uh, uh, un- Jamal Charles is questionable for week one. I mean for week two. And then you have... A lot of pieces on the defense that are missing, and obviously their start to week one being down so much to San Diego, but then being able to bounce back and get a a big come-from-behind victory for Kansas City. So I think that this is a matchup where both teams have something to prove. I'm big on the Texans this year, and I think at home in a revenge-esque game for how Kansas City ended the Texan season last year. I think that they're going to come out. I think that they're going to play pretty well. Uh, and I think this is going to be a game that's going to have J.J. Watt's handprints all over it. I think you're going to see a whole bunch of J.J. Watt in this one, and, I've gone, and I'm going with the Texans. The Los Angeles Rams, their home opener at the Coliseum against Seattle. I think it's going to be another really bad game for them. I don't 
if they get a touchdown, I I wouldn't say I'd be surprised, but I can't envision this team having more more than one touchdown. Um, I'm I'm highly doubting that they can score ten points in this game. I, I just don't see it. I think that the offense looked disgusting against a not that good 49er defense and they're now going up against one of the league's best in Seattle I think Seattle's going to blow them out Russell Wilson is is still questionable I believe and obviously you're going to want Russell uh, out there and and doing everything but I I truly believe that Seattle will have no trouble being able to gain a victory against the Rams it'll it'll be similar um, if Russell Wilson doesn't play I think it can be very similar to what we saw from the Vikings week one victory against the Titans where the defense just does it all. They score the touchdowns. They completely, you know, hold them to to next to nothing, even more so than um, than how the Vikings controlled the Titans. I just think that the Seahawks are going to win this one very, very easily. Now Arizona in another big game for them. Obviously, Week One when it was really tough. Week One was tough for them. That that was a game that they should have won. And I think that when they got down seventeen seven, they realized they should be winning. They, they did turn it up, though, and I, and I haven't lost faith in Arizona um, just yet, and I don't anticipate that I will. I think they're going to have a big bounce-back win here. They're playing the Tampa Bay Bucks. Jameis Winston, week one, terrific. Mike Evans looked terrific. Um, the Bucks are going to take a step in the right direction. This is a team that's going to improve, and, and a lot of people who have been say, saying Jameis Winston looks like one of the future faces of the league at that quarterback position, I think that they are dead on. I think they're correct. I think they're they're correct in saying so. I think that Jameis Winston has given a lot of hope to this Tampa Bay franchise. I don't think that they're going to be able to walk in there and and beat Arizona, especially considering how week one went. I think that Arizona has a lot to prove, and if they start their season 0-2, 0-2 at home, uh, I think that would really cause a lot of concern, but I I don't think that that happens. I think that Arizona is still uh, one of the best in this league, and I think that they show it in, in a victory over Tampa Bay. Jacksonville going to San Diego. I'm going with uh, with the Jaguars. To me, they actually looked not half bad. Half bad week one against the Packers. They they held their own, and I think that they're going to be able to to get a win against San Diego. Who to me, once Keenan Allen went down last season, it got worse. When Keenan Allen got hurt in this game against the Kansas City Chiefs, things got worse immediately. They're just not the same team without him, and I think some of the seasons we saw last year will carry over now without Keenan Allen. I think the Jaguars actually get a pretty big road win here for for early on in the season. Falcons going to Oakland. I'm going with Oakland. I think that their week one victory was gave them so much momentum that they're going to be so excited to just be out there on the field. They're playing in their home opener, and I also don't think that Atlanta is a very good team. Yes, they have Julio Jones, who's one of the league's best wide receivers, but outside of that, there are few things that really get me excited about this team. I will say Matt Ryan looked all right week one against Tampa Bay, but I'm still, uh, you know, I still am not a, much of a, a believer in Matt Ryan, and I think that Oakland's going to have themselves a, a, a lot more comfortable victory than what they had in New Orleans. This game right here now, um, Indianapolis, the Colts going to Denver, is one that's a little tough for me because I don't think necessarily that this one is is easy. I think Andrew Luck, from the two-minute warning in the first half throughout the rest of that game, was as impressive as you've seen in Andrew Luck. He was out there, he was picking apart the defense of the Lions, and he was doing it with a lot of ease. But then you go to the point, well, now he's playing the Denver defense. Point well made. But you think about the fact last year that Andrew Luck actually was able to beat this Denver defense. So it, to, me, to me, it is a bit, it is a little tough there. But the reason why I'm going with Denver, and, and it's two reasons, is that Trevor Simeon, I think, will be able to be comfortable against the Colts, who have one of the worst defenses in the entire league. And I just think in Denver, no matter what, no matter who the quarterback is, this is a very, very difficult team to beat. So in Denver, I have the Broncos getting a victory there. The 
Sunday night game, Green Bay going to Minnesota uh, should be Sam Bradford's first game. I think Green Bay gets themselves a win. I think that Aaron Rodgers has to be somewhat disappointed in how week one went. Um, Under 200 yards throwing, I know he had three total touchdowns, but still, I think that he probably expected a bit more for himself. And I think that as they start to get into their groove, as the run game starts to work a bit more, as Jordan Nelson starts to get back into the swing of things, Green Bay will start looking more impressive and more impressive and more impressive. And I think that that trend starts to pick up with a big Sunday night victory against their division rival, Minnesota Vikings. And then the Monday night game, the Eagles going to Chicago. Carson Wentz looked excellent in his week one performance against the Cleveland Browns. A lot of people, though, are saying, well, it was the Cleveland Browns. And I think that that duly noted, but still the, the throws were right on the money and he looked very very good. Chicago made it a game against Houston, but overall there's just, there's not a lot there for me. I'm not big on the Bears this year. I think that they're a bottom 10 team for sure. Um, A lot of people have the Eagles as a bottom 10 team, but I think that their defense is I think that their defense is massively overrated, uh, underrated, excuse me. I think their defense is massively underrated, and I think if Carson Wentz is going to look how he did week one, then the Eagles really have a, a very good chance, actually, if um, to, 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 do, to do something there. That could be a team that somehow gets themselves to a 9-7 and seven wild card spot if Carson Wentz continues this trend. Now, that's not necessarily where I'm going to be putting my money on, but I do think that this is a group that has the opportunity to, to surprise some people. But that is all the pick for the college games for the week one games. Me and Ant have also been doing our locks of the week. So if I'm going to give my lock of the week, I'm going to have to get, Oh, I missed a game. I missed a game. Uh, the Dolphins travel, traveling to New England. I, I kind of skimmed over because I guess it feels somewhat uh, obvious. I, I'm going with the Patriots, but I will say I still want to see how this one goes. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. The Dolphins actually held their own against Seattle in Seattle week one, and now you have them traveling to Foxborough. That's some. That's pretty stuff, tough to start in Seattle and then in Foxborough. That, that is a rough start for them. But with the Patriots being able to win, on the road against the Cardinals, at home against the Dolphins, they should be able to get themselves another win. But like I said, we've been doing our lock of the week, uh, Ant and I, and, and I'm just going to play it safe here. I'm going to go with the Carolina Panthers. It's lock of the week. Um, yeah, I'm using them early, but I'm just going to continue to make sure I get the, I get these right. Green Bay down, Carolina, again, that should be another lock. Um, that is it for this episode of the Sports Kingdom. Like I said, check that link in the description, please. Head on over to the Sports Kingdom YouTube page. Drop a thumbs up. Watch all the content. And make sure you subscribe for all the content that's going to be going up there. There's a whole bunch of videos that go up on a weekly basis, so make sure you check all of that out. Kevin Walsh, I'll see you guys later.